Kira and welcome to Tarmac. I'm Dave. I'm Matthew and right behind us, straight from Kentucky, is the new right-hand drive Corvette C8. That's right. <laughs> I thought you were going to say more. That's right. It's straight from Kentucky. It's so hot. It's finger licking good. <laughs> you get it? Come on, let's have a look at this. Originally launched in 1953, the Corvette really just grabbed a nation by the by the dangly bits and went this is what power to the rear end is and this is where you know this is the future of driving really it was small it was compact it was just ready to go and raving and and really that's been the blueprint ever since until you get to this eighth generation what they've done with it now is they've made it longer so it's actually 200 mils longer roughly or no, 100 mils longer than before and also a little bit wider but still the same height so it's still something that i can actually look over that's and that's a rarity in cars they've also taken the uh, engine from here and shoved it in the middle and what that's meant is there's more weight to the rear end which obviously means that it gives more oomph as you go off because that's what you want rather than and it's a lot less terrifying when you drive it but we'll get to that in a minute looking around DRLs you've got uh, plenty of vision coming forward there's a lot more angular stuff here I mean uh, depending on whichever angle you look at you could be mistaken for calling this something with um, bulls or something like that so but you don't you have the Chevrolet badging and just lots of lots of angles lots of front stuff going on lots of aerodynamics and one of the actually great things about the aerodynamics is this windscreen what they've done is they've moved it back and over the front wheels here so it's actually mean or it actually means that you don't have to have such an air dam going through so again they've thought about it and made it more aerodynamic it's got a 0.29 uh, drag coefficient so again just look at it but realistically just look at it it's such a handsome car the other thing is this lip here it's not that low to the ground but you can actually push a button and it will raise two inches within three seconds now as a guy i'm quite happy to raise anyway looking around the side here now the body style as you see is a lot more smoother than before the door handles are hidden under here so if you want to get in you a lot more aerodynamic as we said before comes with 19 inch feet on the front and 20 on the back and also 370 uh, mils in as far as discs go and 380 on the back they're both six pistons so they're you know they're there to stop you and believe me the speed this thing goes in you really do want to be stopped as i say height wise is 1.2 meters which is beautiful for me i love the fact that this and being as this is a 3lt in top spec this actual top section comes out we'll show you that now Ta -da. and then also the rest of it look at this just long tail end here look it really is a stingray ready to go and it does have a sting in the tail let's have a look at the tail Realistically, if there was ever a reason, and there are many of reasons to buy this car, look at this tail end. I mean, you've got a Stingray badge on the, or emblem on the back here. You've got the Corvette lettering. You've got these just sharp lights and angles everywhere in this just really low boot spoiler that, uh, we'll show you the boot in a minute. And quad tailpipes, which just are so angry when you get this engine going. And we'll do that again in a minute as well. The other thing is, when you go, do go into the boot, you've got a place for the roof, should you need to put, some, put it somewhere, and also a place for groceries. There's also a place for groceries under the bonnet, which we'll show you now. And also a place for your engine, which this is a 6.2 litre V8 natri aspirated, just raring to go. 365 kilowatts 630 newton meters of torque it's also quite smart it will shut down its uh its cylinders to a v4 when it needs to if you're not really pushing the accelerator really hard which yeah, you know you are going to be pushing it really hard and trying to get as much of this zero to 100 in 2.8 seconds <laughs> it's mind-blowing this is supercar territory and boy is it a supercar speaking of super well he's not really superman anyway is matthew is inside and he'll show you what's going on in there so i may not be superman but a car like this 
certainly makes me feel that way. And on that side, there's space for either your lowest lane or your sidekick. Obviously, lowest is preferable. Either way, they have some of the best seats in the house there with these bucket seats that actually are lined with carbon fiber as well and really hug, hug your body well. So while you're going around corners, don't tend to fly around anywhere. They also have these yellow seat belts, which are pretty cool, very supercarish, and they don't have that much to play with, which is good for the driver's peace of mind, shall we say. And the driver, well, they do have a lot of, a lot of stuff to play with. So why don't you come around this side? As you can see from that angle, it's very much about the driver here. So you're nicely cocooned in by this big beam in the middle, which contains about 21 different buttons for the air conditioning controls. We like that about Corvette because instead of doing what everybody else does and put them somewhere in the screen, they've done everything with, with buttons like old school and it's got a V8 as well. So it is old school. In the middle here, you get the mode functions and they're hidden underneath this little leather rest there that says mode and actually the leather rest doubles up as an armrest there for when you're operating the touchscreen. That's pretty intelligent and it's got a few other buttons you have to really prove its intelligence. So it's got the traction control button which you probably don't want to turn off in a car like this. It's got the front end lifter or the nose lift system which is really helpful for some of those larger speed humps. And then it's got a front camera that gives you a view of the front lip so you don't go about scraping it on things. The four buttons or switches here for the actual drive modes. Well, drive, you gotta flick that up there. Reverse, it's the same. And then park and neutral are sort of buttons. So it is very much, I guess, fighter pilot style in the way that this cockpit has been designed. Another cool thing, as you can see in front of me, this big squarish steering wheel, which is quite unique to this car, but it still feels really nice to hold. And it's got, of course, these massive paddle shifters behind to get the most out of that dual clutch gearbox. So as you can see there, we're in sport mode right now. So everything is red and it's got the rev counter and big in the middle of the screen, right where you want it. Because we are in sport mode, you do have the fuel economy, which is an, a very tiny bar in the corner. But more importantly, you have the G-force meter up there. You have the oil temperature and it also tells you how many cylinders it's using. So right now we're in V8 mode, but if you're going a little light on the throttle, it'll shut down four of those cylinders just to be a bit of a bit environmentally friendly. Of course, you can change the modes on the screen there with the steering wheel to give you a not to 100 performance timer. Um, the life of the oil um, various other stuff like that and you can sort of customize it with the switches on the steering wheel so there's plenty to play around with there and of course changing the driving modes that changes the the dashboard slightly so this is track mode as you can see there it looks very much like a race car it's even got tire pressures now um, oil pressure and plenty more stuff that you can customize Going into touring mode, which is a relaxed one, there you can see the engine has sort of quietened down and the dashboard has changed to show you the time and the temperature and stuff that relaxed people look at. My mode or the customizable mode and this is things that you can chop and change within the dashboard as well. So there's plenty of customization there. And lastly, here's your weather mode. So for times when you are driving through the snow um, or heavy rain by the looks of things, you've got a, a setting for that too. So before we move on to the driving, let's take a quick look at that infotainment screen. So it's pretty simple to use all around. Um, as you can see, the four shortcuts over there. And if you go into the home setting, you have all of those displayed there. Of course, it's got Apple CarPlay as well to make things really easy for the driver. Um, speed is good, but really what, what you want is this PDR setting there, because when you click into that, it firstly gives you a warning, which is, I guess, good in a car like this. You press OK and you can set it so that it actually films a video of your laps around the track. So you can see where you've missed the apexes and, you know, how fast you went on the straight and, and what your reactions were, basically. You can view your recordings there and then toggle with a few things on, in the settings menu as well. So it's really, really geared towards performance. And we like that. The sound system, well, that's a performance unit and it's a Bose performance unit specifically. And it sounds really good in a, in a car like this with a, a well-contained cockpit. But speaking of something that sounds even better, frankly, is that V8 behind us. So I think 
the time is probably right now for me to stop talking and for the car to make some noise. The obvious first thing to do is to plant it. <laughs> Make some crappy old noise here. Crackling old noise actually, rather than crappy old noise. But wow, this thing just tears off and makes angry noises like a V8 angry car should. <laughs> yes, it does. So eight generations of Corvette. Oh, and this is, oh, Despite the first one being all classic and all that sort of stuff, boy, this has got a lot going for it. <laughs> oh, just noise after noise. Lovely. It's just amazing, I think, what moving the engine to the back has done, or to the middle, rather. It's just when you get off the line like that, there's no wheel spin or skidding, or it just got instant grip and you're straight off to 102.8 or 2.9 seconds, whatever it is. Yeah, and it feels fast. I mean, obviously everyone's going EV and stuff like that now, but this one, you can feel it in every part of you. The, the sound makes you feel it's going fast. The speed makes you feel go fast. The, everything makes it feel go fast, like the wind and territory going past you. Ah, oh, it's great. It's got me all of a tither, actually. It is really like an assault on the senses in that way, when you've got that big roaring V8 behind you. And especially, I can imagine, even more so when you've got the roof off. Yeah, we're not doing that because of the, obviously, you hopefully want to hear from us. But let's, okay, let's take one step back and just go through the basics so you know what's going on. Visibility, big mirrors left and right, but literally all you can see out of them are the big haunches of the, the Stingray's tail out there. Um, so there's stuff to see, but not major amounts. Also, the rear view mirror, you sort of get to see just a little bit of reflection. It's a narrow sort of letter box when people used to send letters um, through there, but there's not much through there. Mirrors, uh, the windows to the side, yes, you can see things go past, and also there's plenty around the front. So, visibility, certainly for those in the rear, sorry, if you're looking backwards, there's not much there, but realistically, who wants to look backwards? <laughs> you want to look forwards. Comfort-wise, what do you think of these seats? Oh, they're just so good, these bucket seats with a bit of carbon. They just kind of hold you really tight um, and especially that's good around corners and things where you're not flopping about. I do wonder though because if you can afford this sort of car in New Zealand at least over here you are a little bit older and a little bit larger as well and you might have some trouble getting into these seats. Actually funny you should say about the, the price though. We've spoken or lots of people have come up and said you know what is it etc etc because it does look a little bit different from the norm and then finally they've asked what the price is and when you tell them it's roughly 180 New Zealand give or take you know 10 grand they are all surprised and I'm surprised this this with any other badge on the front would be double treble the price really this is a supercar I mean somebody even came up to us and asked if it was a bull named supercar company um, because it's yellow because it's long and it just looks so special and it drives so specially as well the tech wise there's tons of it you know it does have adaptive cruise it does have your yeah, safety measures and all that sort of stuff the the engagement of your drive and your reverse it's kind of like a pull toggle sort of situation it's kind of cute it's kind of nice um, and also the fact that it raises his nose everybody uh, it's a bit of a snob it's a bit like a bit like me a bit of a snob going on love it but surprisingly you know despite the performance and everything as you can can probably tell from the video is that the ride quality isn't bad at all actually we've been motoring along in in sport and track mode and all of that and our voices are not jittering, you know, the camera's not going all over the place. It's um, 
It's quite comfortable, actually, dare I say. Yeah, it's not bone shaking, which um, there, there is the, the suspension is quite forgiving. Uh, but then it does change direction so rapidly, scarily, actually. It just tears from side to side as you're. This is a particularly angry road, and uh, it's it's great. You can just shift to side to side and also not be thrown around in the car. I think what it's doing to him is scaring me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I'm getting horns. The horns are growing here. It's, it's great. The, the V8 red mist. <laughs> yeah. oh, it's so good. And yes, there's paddles you can downshift and stuff like that, but the DCT box is really really good apart from in slow traffic and who wants to be in slow traffic yeah it does annoy me a little bit as the passenger here that this massive sort of divider takes all the controls away from me but then i guess if you're the passenger in this car you're really there to enjoy the view and the noise not to keep playing around with the the controls it definitely is a driver's car and it is all about the driver you feel cocooned you feel the, the information that's thrown at you, even a head-up display, it's all there and ready to to give you whatever information you want. And yes, there's a good stereo. Actually, it's really strong stereo, but... <laughs> then you've got that. <laughs> that's a stereo. And it's amazing that this is the first right-hand drive Corvette to actually come out of, of the factory in Kentucky. And they've just doesn't done an amazing job with it like you know everything's screwed in well together it feels nice and comfortable and you know there's leather and you know carbon fiber around and stuff so it does feel premium as well it's not just you know meant meant to be for v8 hones basically yeah there is there's definite refinement i mean this is obviously the top of the line with some added carbon um parts to it as well so new zealand are definitely not uh cutting corners when they're bringing uh, what should well, you know what what Kiwis like, which is the top of top of the range. Um, but what a car! In actual fact, I'm trying to find fault with it, and you know it's really hard to find anything. You know that that I go. This is glaringly not nice. It's it's comfortable. It's aggressive. It's fast. It's low to the ground. It's sports. It's a sports car. It's a super sports car. Um, yeah, I mean, there's probably more complaints from the from the passenger seat because there's not much to do there. You have to reach over to to touch anything. But then, get out! You shouldn't yeah. be on my side of the <laughs> car anyway. It's great. Actually, this is an American car, so I should be in the driver's seat here. <laughs> you know? Now that's a scary thought. <laughs> <laughs> but no, to echo what Dave said, is that. You've seen me point out the performance tele telemetry and stuff like that, so it can go really hard on a, a track day, but at the same time, it can also be, you know, a nice touring car um, around the back roads. It's got both both sort of sides going for it, and that's really good. <laughs> so there you have it. What a vehicle, the eighth generation Corvette. Just like me, things get better and better with age and generations. And well, what a what a vehicle this is. It's sporty, which may not be just like me, but it's also such great value. It's um, it really does have all the sort of sportiness that a supercar would would have. And you know, if you want to match them up dollar for dollar, you'd be crazy not to go for this i think that's absolutely right we were discussing earlier for this sort of money there's nothing that's quite this fast or angry or or really gets the kind of attention that this this does as well and especially that fluoro yellow helps as well yeah it does the police have been following us no actually they could probably see us from miles away honestly great great car um the only fault i'd thought i have thought of a fault the connection to your phone just takes a little while but the uh so <laughs> who's got patience right it's brilliant thanks for watching make sure you subscribe we will be just bringing you more and more as we go through and uh see you on the next one see ya.